I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you today to our Bible study of the Apostles' Doctrine of Eschatology and our continuing series and in contextual inconsistencies. Our lesson today begins with a question, a question that a lot of people have about the two kingdoms. Are there two kingdoms in the New Testament of the Bible? What sayeth the Scriptures? We're going to look and examine what the Scriptures say about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. There are many scriptures which show that these two kingdoms, they are synonymous. John the Baptist said this in Matthew chapter 3, 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord Jesus reiterated the same statement when his ministry began in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And again in Mark chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. So are the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven the same? There has to be scriptural harmony. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3 we see this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. And in Luke chapter 6 and verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. So what he's saying is that they are the same kingdom. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. This same kingdom of heaven was said to be at hand is the resting place of of all of those who are the seed of Abraham, the believers in Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 11. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And in Luke chapter 13, verses 28 and 29. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. There again, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are one and the same. The message that Jesus preached at the beginning of his ministry was the same message with which he commissioned the apostles. Luke shows Jesus associating healing with the kingdom of God in Luke chapter 9 and verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And Matthew shows the eminence that came with the kingdom of heaven. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are what's being spoken of here. They are one and the same. Even John the Baptist had an inferior position compared to the status of those in the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And in Luke chapter 7 and verse 28. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. 
they're speaking about the one kingdom, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. They are synonymous. They're interchangeable. What about the mysteries that were to be revealed? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And then in Mark chapter 4 and verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And then in Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. There again, another place where the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are one and the same. When you start comparing the scriptures, look at Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 14... 23 and 24. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter in to the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. There again, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are one and the same thing. In Mark chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for as such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. In Luke chapter 18, verses 16 and 17. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for as such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. When you examine everything that the scriptures say about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, they are one and the same. What saith the scriptures? Matthew and Mark compare the mustard seed. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31. <clears throat> Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Mark chapter 4, verses 30 and 31. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. It's explicitly clear that the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are identical. They are not separate, nor are they two different phases of one kingdom. They are one and the same. The kingdom of the Son is the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 and 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In his kingdom. Jesus informed the apostles when they saw certain things come to pass, 
they would know with certainty the kingdom of God was at the doors. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 33. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. In Mark chapter 13 and verse 29. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. And in Luke 21, 31. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. These are the scriptures that really, when you put everything together, you get a very clear, specific answer. A lot of things are said, a lot of ideologies are created because people do not look at all of the scriptures. We have to look at everything that the, the Bible says about any particular subject or doctrine. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 and 31, another example. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Not only is the coming of the kingdom mentioned, but he brings the holy angels into the picture, which again harmonizes with Matthew chapter 16, verses 27 and 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So when you see the kingdom of the Father and you see the kingdom of the Son, they are, the, they are one and same. They harmonize. There's no difference. They are the same. The kingdom of the Father is the kingdom of God. Matthew 26, 28, and 29. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. In his Father's kingdom. And the kingdom of the Son is the kingdom of the Father. Matthew 13, verses 41 and verse 43. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. I've often asked the question of people that go to church, are you born again? They say, yes. I say, are you in the kingdom of God? They say, yes, I was born into the kingdom of God. Just like Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 3 and verse 5, baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the point that I'm making here today is the fact that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are one and the same. So are you in the kingdom of heaven? If you're in the kingdom of God, then you are in the kingdom of heaven. A question often asked is, where is the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he in heaven? The answer is always yes. Well, if heaven is where God rules and reigns, and heaven is everywhere, and heaven is dimensional, then heaven and the kingdom of heaven are one and the same. And if heaven and the kingdom of heaven are one and the same, then the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and heaven are one and the same. But they are dimensional. They are a spiritual realm. When people are born again, their bodies are not in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. 
but their spirit, their soul is there in the kingdom of God. And Jesus told us that if we believe the scriptures, that we would never die. So we find out when we look and examine more of what the scriptures are saying, there is something that is definite there for us to see. Remember, the more pieces of the story of redemption that you could put in their proper place, the clearer and more you will understand about the story of redemption. When you die as a Christian, you're going to go to heaven. If you've been born again, if you've been baptized by submersion in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost according to Scripture, John 8, 51 said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And in John eleven twenty six, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 8. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that, while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 46, 50, and 54, the Bible says this, Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And when does this take place? When you physically die, when your body dies, the eternal life that God gave you when you were born again is going to step out of this realm of the natural into that next realm, the spiritual realm, the dimensional realm where God is, where all born-again Christians go to when they die. That's why when it, we, we talked about the lesson on resurrection. People that are born again are not going to have a resurrection out of the cemetery. Their resurrection happened when they were baptized in water, in the likeness of the burial of Jesus. When they resurrected with the, ba the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that was their resurrection. That's when they received eternal life. To be born again into the kingdom of God is a must, is a necessary. Except a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. But when you are born again, you do enter into that spiritual kingdom. Only your body, while you are in your body, this body cannot go to that realm, cannot go to that dimension. You physically must die. That's why Hebrews 9.27 said, It is appointed unto all men once to die. And with death, not after death, but with death, 
That word with there in Hebrews 9.27 is the Greek word meta, which means with. So when you die, right at your death, you will face God in judgment if you are not born again. If you are born again, if you are in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, then you will, you will go to that realm. You will go to it in the next instant. John chapter 3 and verse 16, a most familiar scripture said, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The word perish there means to be destroyed. The judgment of God is eternal destruction. Not in its duration, but in its result. <laughs> there are no alternative places to go when you die. There's no hope of life, no existence past this physical body without the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read it for yourself. Read the scriptures. Believe what God has said. Those words are eternal. They are spirit and they are life. Sometimes to follow God, you have to stop following men. Your church will not save you. Your preacher will not save you. Only the word of God, only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one. Jesus said, through inspiration in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8, though we are, are an angel from heaven, come down and preach any other gospel unto you. Let him be accursed. So be careful. If your salvation is so important to you, you need to check it out. You need to read and study your Bible. You will become a product of what you are taught. If you have any input, any question, you want to send us an email, you can do so at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.